Hello students, hope you are doing okay and ready for another session of learning. This video is on chemical bonding, structure and properties. Here are the learning objectives, as always make sure you understand them. Not everything is covered in this video as some of the material was touched upon in earlier videos. Let us now proceed with this lesson. We can classify matter into several categories. Two broad categories are mixtures and pure substances. A pure substance has a constant composition. All specimens of a pure substance have exactly the same makeup and properties. Any sample of sucrose, table sugar, consists of 42.1% carbon, 6.5% hydrogen, and 51.4% oxygen by mass. Any sample of sucrose also has the same physical properties, such as melting point, color, and sweetness, regardless of the source from which it is isolated. We can divide pure substances into two classes. Elements and compounds. Pure substances that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical changes are called elements. Iron, silver, gold, aluminum, sulfur, oxygen, and copper are familiar examples of the more than 100 known elements, of which about 90 occur naturally on the earth, and two dozen or so have been created in laboratories. Pure substances that can be broken down by chemical changes are called compounds. This breakdown may produce either elements or other compounds, or both. Mercury 2 oxide, an orange crystalline solid, can be broken down by heat into the elements mercury and oxygen, figure 1.12. A mixture is composed of two or more types of matter that can be present in varying amounts, and can be separated by physical changes, such as evaporation. Although there are just over 100 elements, tens of millions of chemical compounds result from different combinations of these elements. Each compound has a specific composition and possesses definite chemical and physical properties, by which we can distinguish it from all other compounds. And, of course, there are innumerable ways to combine elements and compounds to form different mixtures. A summary of how to distinguish between the various major classifications of matter is shown in Figure 1.14. Atoms of many main group metals lose enough electrons to leave them with the same number of electrons as an atom of the preceding noble gas. To illustrate, an atom of an alkali metal, group 1, loses one electron and forms a cation with a 1 plus charge. An alkaline earth metal, group 2, loses two electrons and forms a cation with a 2 plus charge, and so on. For example, a neutral calcium atom, with 20 protons and 20 electrons, readily loses 2 electrons. This results in a cation with 20 protons, 18 electrons, and a 2 plus charge. It has the same number of electrons as atoms of the preceding noble gas, argon, and is symbolized C at 2 plus. The name of a metal ion is the same as the name of the metal atom from which it forms, so C at 2 plus is called a calcium ion. Atoms of group 17 gain 1 electron and form anions with a 1 charge, atoms of group 16 gain 2 electrons and form ions with a 2 minus charge, and so on. Compounds composed of ions are called ionic compounds, or salts, and their constituent ions are held together by ionic bonds. Electrostatic forces of attraction between oppositely charged cations and anions. The properties of ionic compounds shed some light on the nature of ionic bonds. Ionic solids exhibit a crystalline structure and tend to be rigid and brittle. They also tend to have high melting and boiling points, which suggests that ionic bonds are very strong. Ionic solids are also poor conductors of electricity for the same reason the strength of ionic bonds prevents ions from moving freely in the solid state. Most ionic solids, however, dissolve readily in water. Once dissolved or melted, ionic compounds are excellent conductors of electricity and heat, because the ions can move about freely. As all substances must be electrically neutral, the total number of positive charges on the cations of an ionic compound must equal the total number of negative charges on its anions. The formula of an ionic compound represents the simplest ratio of the numbers of ions necessary to give identical numbers of positive and negative charges. For example, the formula for aluminum oxide, Al2O3, indicates that this ionic compound contains two aluminum cations, Al3+, for every three oxide in ions, O2 thus, 2 times plus 3, plus, 3 times 2, equals 0. It is important to note, however, that the formula for an ionic compound does not represent the physical arrangement of its ions. It is incorrect to refer to a sodium chloride, NACL, molecule because there is not a single ionic bond, per se, between any specific pair of sodium and chloride ions. The attractive forces between ions are isotropic, the same in all directions, meaning that any particular ion is equally attracted to all of the nearby ions of opposite charge. This results in the ions arranging themselves into a tightly bound, three-dimensional lattice structure. Sodium chloride, for example, consists of a regular arrangement of equal numbers of Na plus cat ions and Cl and ions, figure 7.3. In ionic compounds, electrons are transferred between atoms of different elements to form ions. But this is not the only way that compounds can be formed. Atoms can also make chemical bonds by sharing electrons equally between each other. Such bonds are called covalent bonds. 
Covalent bonds are formed between two atoms when both have similar tendencies to attract electrons to themselves, i.e., when both atoms have identical or fairly similar ionization energies and electron affinities. For example, two hydrogen atoms bond covalently to form an H2 molecule. Each hydrogen atom in the H2 molecule has two electrons stabilizing it, giving each atom the same number of valence electrons as the noble gas He. Compounds that contain covalent bonds exhibit different physical properties than ionic compounds. Because the attraction between molecules, which are electrically neutral, is weaker than that between electrically charged ions, covalent compounds generally have much lower melting and boiling points than ionic compounds. In fact, many covalent compounds are liquids or gases at room temperature, and, in their solid states, they are typically much softer than ionic solids. Furthermore, whereas ionic compounds are good conductors of electricity when dissolved in water, most covalent compounds are insoluble in water. Since they are electrically neutral, they are poor conductors of electricity in any state. Molecular solids, such as ice, sucrose, table sugar, and iodine, as shown in figure 10.42, are composed of neutral molecules. The strengths of the attractive forces between the units present in different crystals vary widely, as indicated by the melting points of the crystals. Small symmetrical molecules, nonpolar molecules, such as H2, N2, O2, and F2, have weak attractive forces, and form molecular solids with very low melting points, below 200 degrees centigrade. Substances consisting of larger, nonpolar molecules have larger attractive forces, and melt at higher temperatures. Molecular solids composed of molecules with permanent dipole moments, polar molecules, melt at still higher temperatures. Examples include ice, melting point, 0 degrees centigrade, and table sugar, melting point, 185 degrees centigrade. Covalent network solids include crystals of diamond, silicon, some other nonmetals, and some covalent compounds, such as silicon dioxide, sand, and silicon carbide, carborundum, the abrasive on sandpaper. Many minerals have networks of covalent bonds. The atoms in these solids are held together by a network of covalent bonds, as shown in figure 10.41. To break or to melt a covalent network solid covalent bonds must be broken. Because covalent bonds are relatively strong, covalent network solids are typically characterized by hardness, strength, and high melting points. For example, diamond is one of the hardest substances known and melts above 3500 degrees centigrade. Metallic solids such as crystals of copper, aluminum, and iron are formed by metal atoms figure 10.40. The structure of metallic crystals is often described as a uniform distribution of atomic nuclei within a sea of delicalized electrons. The atoms within such a metallic solid are held together by a unique force known as metallic bonding, that gives rise to many useful and varied bulk properties. All exhibit high thermal and electrical conductivity, metallic luster, and malleability. Many are very hard and quite strong. Because of their malleability, the ability to deform under pressure or hammering, they do not shatter and, therefore, make useful construction materials. The melting points of the metals vary widely. Mercury is a liquid at room temperature, and the alkali metals melt below 200 degrees centigrade. Several post-transition metals also have low melting points, whereas the transition metals melt at temperatures above 1000 degrees centigrade. These differences reflect differences in strengths of metallic bonding among the metals. The physical properties of condensed matter, liquids and solids, can be explained in terms of the kinetic molecular theory. In a liquid intermolecular attractive forces hold the molecules in contact, although they still have sufficient heat to move past each other. Intermolecular attractive forces, collectively referred to as van der Waals forces, are responsible for the behavior of liquids and solids, and are electrostatic in nature. Dipole-dipole attractions result from the electrostatic attraction of the partial negative end of one dipolar molecule, for the partial positive end of another. The temporary dipole that results from the motion of the electrons in an atom, can induce a dipole in an adjacent atom, and give rise to the London dispersion force. London forces increase with increasing molecular size. Hydrogen bonds are a special type of dipole-dipole attraction that results when hydrogen is bonded to one of the three most electronegative elements. F, O, or N. Thank you all for paying attention. Make sure to practice with past papers which can be found on the BMAT website. Thank you and the next video is on group chemistry.